We actually have done quite a few different designs, but the grow towers that are behind me uh, of what are the most recent iteration of that. The mission here is to provide sustainable food and energy independence to local communities around the world. We see a world around us that's trying to control your food. Uh, we call it from seed to stomach. That's what people are trying to control. So when you look at the big companies, they're always trying to control that entire vertical. But we're different. We're more like David versus Goliath. We're the little David that's going up against this huge machine. We actually believe that you as an individual should have the ability to grow your own food. The technology in the towers is equivalent to aerospace technology. We have aircraft grade materials that go into the system so it's high quality. We have great engineers from uh, Boeing subsidiary helping uh, build the system. We have NASA scientists uh, helping us make sure we use the system correctly. And then we also have the control system that we've designed ourselves that's essentially the same as an unmanned aerial vehicle only in a tower. Uh, so we like to joke, or at least I do, it's not an unmanned aerial system, it's an unmanned food growing system. It's, it's essentially a robot. One of the major things that separates our systems from others is that we use technology called aeroponics, or a technique called aeroponics. And in this, there's no dirt in the system. And because NASA actually helped design this technology, the plants actually grow about 15% faster with about 15% more yield. So in a small space, you actually get a lot more out of it than even what you would in normal dirt growing, which we think is great. But the towers allow you to grow food pretty much anywhere. And they were designed to go in places that humans already live and work. So you already have your air conditioning, you already have heating in the, the winter, and they're small enough to where they can fit into somebody's garage or even in a home, or they could fit in a large scale facility. And because they're modular, you can even connect them to each other and share nutrients so you don't have to have, spend as much money uh, to have that. So they're modular, easy to use, and pretty much take the learning curve out of growing food. What makes this product different than a lot of the other growing systems that are out in the market is that we use aeroponic technology. That's the first critical thing that goes into it. Um, so that means no dirt, means no herbicides, no pesticides, and you get a faster and more or greater yield out of the system. So our costs are a little bit higher up front because we have more technology and more features, but the long-term costs are so much lower, almost half compared to everybody else's. Uh, some of the other features that we have is we use full spectrum LED lights that are integrated into the tower. Some of our competitors, you have to buy those separate so their costs go up. But ours are meant to be growing all year round with that full spectrum. Full spectrum is also better for the plants, um, though it's debated. Uh, full spectrum lights give you IR, UV, as well as they keep the bugs at bay. Whereas sometimes the uh, dedicated lights that you would see, like the purple lights, uh, those will actually bring in pests. And we partner with universities like Texas A&M. Uh, they're one of our partners, North Dakota State University, and they're helping feed us this information to help increase our design. Another key factor that really truly separates us from the others is that we can grow root vegetables and nobody else can. So that means potatoes, it means carrots, it means garlic, beets, real food that's gonna sustain people rather than just the traditional leafy greens, strawberries um, that you see in traditional hydroponic systems. And finally, because our towers have multiple different variations, we can grow really tall crops. We've actually grown corn. Not that I think that's a great idea, but we've done it. But one of the really exciting things that we're growing right now are raspberries, um, blackberries. We're going to be trying blueberries. We can grow all that in our system, whereas other uh, competitors just can't do that. They don't have the space that we do because they're trying to, they have one size product that fits all, but ours are tailored to each of the customers. We also have a tower dedicated to growing potatoes. You literally unzip it, reach in, and grab the tubers as they come out. So we're excited about that, and we're working with Texas A&M to help make that even better. Another crop that we can actually grow really, really well without having a lot of experience, which is another key thing, is we use computers and technology to help take the learning curve, which is really steep. If you ever try to grow your own food, it's hard. You know, you might be able to get a few crops here and there, but getting it consistently and getting the yield you need to survive on, that's a difficult thing. That takes a lot of learning. And we're programming our systems to take that learning curve out and to be able to grow a large range of crops. And one of the key ones we get asked all the time is, can you grow cannabis in the system? And the answer is yes. We actually started off not knowing how to grow. We put it in the system, set it to default, and we've got amazing yields, enough so that in one crop you pay off our and make a profit just that first time. So we get asked a lot, what's the difference between hydroponics and aeroponics? And uh, I'll just throw in dirt growing as well. So to really understand hydroponics, you need to look at how we grow food normally. 
Normally we take the seed, we take dirt, dirt has nutrients in it, we add water, sunlight, and that's how we start growing. There's a lot more into it than that, but those are the basics. When you're growing hydroponically, you remove the dirt from that set of factors. So you're having water run constantly over the roots or their roots are submerged in water. There's different techniques. One of the sub techniques of hydroponics is called aeroponics, where you're still using water, but the roots are actually suspended in air. And that means that they get a lot more oxygen and that extra oxygen NASA figured out that actually creates faster yield and bigger yield because the plants are getting more of what they need. And instead of having a pump run constantly, which burns energy, we only run our pumps a few minutes every half an hour to 45 minutes. So we use less energy than those systems as well. Yeah, so when it comes to you know, growing food, there's always something you have to do to take care of that food. If you're out, if you have a garden, you have to build the garden, you have to bring in new organic soil, compost, mulch, you have to go out there every day and weed, you have to pull up bugs, maybe even have to spray different chemicals to make sure everything's safe. Uh, in our systems, we get rid of pretty much all that. What we look at every day is about five minutes of your time to maintain a single tower. And what you're gonna be doing during that time is checking the water level. You're gonna be making sure the nutrients are at the right level and just making sure that the nozzles and filters are all clean and that's it. Some days it won't take you hardly any time. Other days it'll take you about five minutes to go do that work. So it's really simple to be able to use our towers and you don't really need to know how to grow food at all. There's a lot of really exciting technology that's coming out in the market today. Uh, we have blockchain technology, we have artificial intelligence. And I get asked, you know, how do these technologies, are you gonna be using that at Eden? And the answer is yes. We actually have uh, part of our product roadmap is to integrate two different actual AIs. Now this isn't the same as what you're seeing with ChatGPT, uh, but it's really more machine learning based AI where we can remove um, even more the human from the process of having to grow food. So what we mean by that is using an AI to monitor local conditions and then adapt the settings in the tower to really optimize the food growth without a human ever have to be involved. And that requires little more than just a standard machine learning algorithm, but kind of moves into the AI realm so that it can learn the local com conditions and then review the crops that are in the system as well as imagery that would be collecting uh, from the system through our um, sensors and then be able to adapt everything based on how the plants are actually doing right then and there. So that's one type of AI that we're gonna be using. We have another type uh, that's gonna be looking at the plants themselves, the health of the plants, looking for bugs and other types of things that go into that. Now this is all part of our roadmap is to be able to integrate these things in. In today's world, these are pretty simple AIs, but they'll be adding a lot more value to our customers. When it comes to things like blockchain technology, other types of uh, advanced technology, on our product roadmap is what we call the digital farmer's market, where you're actually gonna be taking systems like ours, you can imagine them in you know, an apartment building, different levels where maybe John in room 201 is growing carrots and Sue over in room 506 is growing uh, some lettuce and you know, Bob up on the 20th floor has got some broccoli going. And what we wanna be able to do is reconnect everybody like what we used to be, a community, uh, families working together. And we'll be using blockchain technology to help secure transactions, kind of like Uber, but with growers, with delivery drivers, and with the actual consumers, and making sure that the cold chain is modified and you know exactly where your food came from, 100% controlled and secure through the blockchain. There are a lot of different things going on in the world right now. And when we sit down and look at the news every day, someday you just want to put your head in the sand and ignore what's happening because it is pretty scary. Whether it be culture wars or food or riots or political issues or different candidates or uh, anything that's happening, there is just so much uncertainty. And what our towers can do for you is bring you certainty in uncertain times. We're here to help feed you. We want to get these towers into your home, in your family's home, in your communities so that you can have food security. That security is your independence. That's where we all need to be. We don't need to be dependent on large systems anymore. That is not working. So it's time for a change and we're here to help you with that.